Hey guys, welcome to Supercars of London. How are you doing? And hopefully you enjoyed the weekend. It has been about a week since I returned from my Monaco trip with Sam, Seb and Tim in the Lamborghini Gallardo LP560 and it's also been a couple of days since I returned from my Ford Mustang tour in Munich south of Germany. Now combining those two road trips and including my first supercar road trip with the Audi R8 that I did back in April, I have decided to create this video which is all of the hidden costs that you probably wouldn't expect to incur when you're going on a road trip. Whether you're going in a supercar or whatever car you go in, these are some of the hidden costs that you might not expect to pay for when you're on a road trip. Now, number one can be a very small cost, but it also could be absolutely massive, and it all depends on how you decide to approach it. Now, I have only owned this car for about a month and a half, and when the plans came together to drive down to Monaco, I didn't have enough time to one, wrap the car, or put paint protection over, which you might have seen in Tim Shmi 150's video with the McLaren. So, this car, unfortunately, doesn't have any paint protection. A vehicle wrap, whether you change color, also adds a layer of protection, which is why um, a wrap is such a good option. However, paint protection is a huge thing. When you're doing loads of miles on the motorway, on country roads, and especially in the mountains, there's a lot of stones on the road that can chip your paint. So luckily, I have been okay, and all you can see here are a bunch of flies, and my paint has actually held up very, very well. So I've been incredibly lucky, but usually, I'd have either have liked to wrap the car or put a clear coat of protection film over the car just to protect it from any costs that I could incur when it comes to chipping the paint. Now the second cost that you will incur on these sorts of road trips and the mileage that you're covering comes in the form of rubber tires. Now, when I bought this car, they were already part worn. They weren't brand new, which is something that I probably should have considered changing before I went to Monaco. However, the extended mileage that you're doing on this car and the stress that you're putting these tires under, traveling along the motorway and the mountain roads for such long periods of time, means that your tires will start to wear out a lot quicker. And this car, being a four-wheel drive car, uses the front tires to gain grip. So, you have to change all of the tires at the same time, which can be incredibly expensive and over a thousand pounds depending on which brand you want to use for your replacement tires so when you set off on your road trip however long it may be the one thing you have to consider is music now what are you gonna do when you are traveling hundreds maybe even thousands of miles over a period of time now I had an epic fail on this car because it was so new I didn't know whether I could have the CDs the memory card my phone or even the radio but as I found out that when I was in foreign countries the radio wasn't that good and as I was driving down through the um, center of France down into the south of France the signal of radio wasn't that good and you're, it's not the same language I didn't understand anything that they were talking about you very rarely get to hear music that you're familiar with so one of the costs that you wouldn't normally expect to have to pay on a road trip is buying CDs buying albums, buying music from the store, which isn't usually where people go and buy music from anymore. Now it's online and downloads. The other thing is memory cards, these bad boys. I have two slots that you can put into the um, multimedia system so that I can play my own music. However, Lamborghini or Audi don't tell you that they have to be a specific file name and locate it in a specific folder on the memory card, which is very, very annoying when you're in a rush, packing, ready to go for your road trip. You have to follow instructions that you can only really find on forums, ownership forums. And a day before my road trip, I didn't have that time to work out and transfer music onto one of these bad boys. So unfortunately, I had to either listen to the radio, which was really hit and miss with the signal, or plug headphones into my phone and listen to my music that is already stored on my iPhone, which definitely isn't a comfortable choice. An interesting cost that I never really came across on my first road trip, more on the second road trip when me and Sam were traveling back from Monaco to London in one day. It took 14 hours. 14 hours on the road, you get hungry, you get thirsty. So when you're stopping for fuel, 
fuel is obviously a cost that you expect to incur when you are doing a road trip, and especially in a thirsty 5.2 litre V10. However, the one cost that I didn't really account for, albeit quite small, is when you're stopping at these fuel stations, you're filling up 85, 90, even 100 euros of petrol, but then that goes over to like 110, sometimes even 115 on snacks whether that's energy drinks or sweets or biscuits whatever it is your diet goes out of the window you just impulse buy everything in the petrol station so every time you stop off for fuel which happened three times on the way back from monaco to london alone you end up incurring costs up to 50 euros which is completely stupid but then i've got stuff still in my car for that road trip i've still got sweets down here give me two seconds i've still got sweets so it's a cost, it's a small cost, but it's a cost that you never really think about. And if you're going on a road trip for six days, then you're gonna be spending a lot of money in petrol stations, not just on fuel. This next cost is very indirect to the actual road trip. When you're covering a thousand miles, which is it, it, a thousand miles or near enough a thousand miles from London to Monaco, let's go back to our Euro tour that we did when we went from Monaco to Grenoble, Grenoble to Italy, Italy to Austria, Austria to Cologne and Cologne back home. All of those miles, bearing in mind I had to get down from London originally, down to Monaco for top marks in the RA, you're covering thousands of miles. I think Sam calculated it to be near enough 3,000 miles and that is an indirect cost to the depreciation, the actual value of the car. Not only that, but it also makes your service come closer, which makes your service intervals a lot closer together. You service these cars at every 10,000 miles or every year, whichever comes first. So if you're covering lots and lots of miles, then you're bringing your servicing forward, which means that your costs are gonna be increasing every single year. And you can't really get a service for cheaper than 1,200 quid in this car. So you do have to be careful when you are coming up to your service intervals. And that 1,200 quid is basically the minimum. If there's anything wrong or anything that needs replaced, or any recommendation from Lamborghini when you take this car to service, you pretty much have to do it because these cars are built so highly struck. But if you leave parts that aren't working properly for a long period of time, then it might damage other parts of the car, which then would make everything a lot more expensive. Now for me, this is the most annoying hidden cost incurred when you're on a road trip. And it's something that I've had to deal with both in my R8 and this car. Because this system here in the sat-nav is exactly the same in the R8 and the Lamborghini Gallardo, in the R8, I hated it. It was an awful system, it didn't work, it took me down one-way systems, it took me down bus roads, specifically designed for buses when I was in Paris. In Europe, this thing is awful. In England, it's not even that good. You can only type in four letter postcodes, and as most people know, they're now seven or eight digits. So this system is very, very dated, and I hate using it, which means if I want to know where I'm going anywhere in Europe, I need to download Google Maps or Waze. Now, now these two apps are free to download. The problem comes that you need to connect to data, you need to connect to internet to make these work so that they can find you on the road, so that the satellites up in the sky can actually find you so that they know where you're going, which is the whole idea of GPS. So the hidden cost when it comes to satellite navigation is mobile phone data so that you know where you're going. Whether the, Whatever network you're on, apart from three, and I hate three for this, is that you have to pay extra to use data abroad. And I know that this is getting abolished in the next coming years, but in the last two months alone, I have spent nearly 200 pounds on data on top of my phone contracts. And that is included the two weeks in Monaco, the five days that I had in New York, and the last two days that I had in Germany in the Ford Mustang. You always need sat-nav, especially when you're driving. You need to know where your end destination is or you need to know where your lunch stop is. So mobile phone data is one of the biggest hidden costs that you can incur when on a road trip. When you're on the road, you have to stay in hotels and base it around the rest of your route. So when I did the Euro tour, Grenoble, Lake Como, somewhere in Austria that I can't remember, 
Cologne for two nights and then back to London. And then when I was in Germany with Sam with the Ford Mustang, we stayed in Munich. So there's hotels that you always have to consider, but they aren't the hidden costs. They're obvious costs. The hidden costs come from the car parks. Now if I was to summarise all of the holidays that I've ever been on in my life, the amount of times that you arrive at the hotel in your own car has been rare. Usually you fly in or you take a ferry or, or however you get there, you're very rarely in your own car so you need to park your car. However, on these road trips, you always have your car and that means you have to pay for hotel parking, which sometimes isn't cheap. In Germany, I think we paid around 25 pounds for the 24 hour service, but it wasn't 24 hours. So it was quite expensive compared to some of the parking that you might be able to get in shopping centers here in the UK. And over the road trip that we did with the Europe with my RA, staying in five or six hotels, that adds up and it becomes 200 euros pretty quick. Outrageous! The road going down there. Zigzag, yeah. Yes, Germany.